Hello everyone. In this uh, session, I'm going to look at how we can really use the concept of decision trees which we have discussed till now for understanding survival analysis. Survival analysis, as the word itself is very clear, we are trying to look at time to survive. Time to event. In general, if I have to talk about it, it's time to event. So probably I can say very common usage is time to death. In the mortality studies, we can use it for time to death or time to survive a particular uh, disease. Right? How long a person has fought a disease before he was dead. The time from the, from the time the person is admitted into the hospital, right? Uh, either he would have recovered and he would have left or he would have died somewhere. So, what is the time? One, for death. Two, for survival. Or three, sometimes in the middle, he would have left the treatment process altogether. Those kind of data are called as sensor. So, with the presence of all these things, I really want to assess the time to survival for a particular set of people, for a particular event. So, that is what is survival analysis. And if I have to differentiate between two groups of people, let's say uh, people with diabetes versus people without diabetes. I am talking about time to survival from a particular disease. I want to really assess is there any difference in the time to survival for a particular disease for a person, for people with diabetes versus people without diabetes. In those cases, I am bringing in the decision trees. I am trying to build a tree not uh, I am trying to build a survival analysis model, not a universally, not a universally similar kind of uh, a model, but for different groups, I wanted a different survival analysis model so that I can even compare the impact of such kind of factors on the survival factors, right? So that is what we are going to look at. How can really the decision trees help us in performing survival analysis. Initially, we will try to understand the basic introductory aspects of survival analysis and the decision trees and today, the need for using the decision trees in the survival analysis. Then we will be talking about two important algorithms in this context, right, uh, which can be implemented quite comfortably in R. So again, our focus here is more on implementation in R. Once we have understood the basic concept, we will not get into the mathematical part of it. We will look at the implementation in R and whatever the <coughs> response that we get, how do we interpret the same for uh, making a decision? So this is where I am going to look at the exponential algorithm as well as conditional inference survival tree algorithm. So, we will differentiate between these two as well. And see, we'll take one single example. Here, the example that I'm going to look at is nothing to do with uh, the diseases, survivals, etc. I have taken some data again from the world of cricket. So, specifically, the one-day international cricket and within that, all the innings that are being played by Virat Kohli. I have taken a list of all the innings that have been played by Virat Kohli till date. And uh, within that, let me load the data so that you will uh, get a clarity on my question once I create the question. So, this is the data. So, let me load that data. I'll showcase what is there as a part of this Virat. So, number of balls he has faced in all the innings that he had played till now. 
what was his strike rate in that particular game right per every 100 balls how many runs he has scored at what position he has batted in what innings one means india batted first in that match and two means india batted second then we have a position home or away indicated as a or h status status of one means yes he was out in all these matches so if i if i look at it uh, more similar to uh, a death in a mortality study so these are the scenarios where the event has actually occurred the event is uh, out here here i am looking at the event being out so time to event is nothing but how many balls typically he has taken to get out so he has taken 22 balls to get out 67 balls to get out whereas zero indicates no he did not get out so zero is a kind of a not out which in this case i will take it as a sensor data because i don't know when he would have got out in that particular match he has faced two balls and he was not out but we don't know when he will get out that is what is the sensoring all about so we have a sensor data there so that all the sensor data is shown with the status of zero and all the data where the event has occurred here the event is getting out so basically here time to out if this problem has to be framed properly it is a time to out problem or is more specifically here the time is tracked in terms of number of balls balls to out right so that is what is the problem out here i am more interested in taking this as a time variable and this as the status variable which is showing whether he was out or not out once are the event has occurred zero is the event did not occur and the data is uh, more of uh, uh, sensor now what we really want to see using the decision tree if i don't have the decision tree and if i have to build a straight forward survival model i only need these two things ball space status because ball space is the time and status is more associated with uh, whether the event has occurred or the data is sensor those two columns are sufficient if i have to build a general survival uh, analysis model but now a decision tree in terms of partitioning i want to do it based on let's say the opposition or let's say the innings let's say home versus away i really want to see whether there is some level of a significant difference in the survivals in so in in the time to uh, out that is happening let's say in home versus away or let's say in first innings versus second innings or something so that i can really make some kind of conclusions about this particular play right so let's look at uh, uh, let's go ahead and work out on this data first of all getting into the introductory aspect of survival analysis today is just not restricted only to the medical field which earlier used to be the case right where the major usages are time to death or time to recover from a particular disease right so there are so many such kind of uh, instances which were uh, earlier used but today any time to event we can think of from many from many uh, industries from many dimensions from many areas of research we can very well use the survival analysis model so we are talking about the time to survive time to fail various other aspects regarding that earlier for doing this there was a mechanism called cox proportional hazard regression model which is more like a semi parametric kind of a model so earlier we would have used the cox regression for modeling various survival analysis model like 
there uh, i could have taken age of the person into constraint or probably the gender of the person and based on that the time to survive the probability of survival would have been computed separate so we had a list of parametric and semi parametric models wherein the various covariate effects like age and all which are continuous variables i could i have used uh, all these uh, things as uh, input parameters and a regression model would have been built and based on that a statistical inference can be uh, created and which can very well be used for making interpretations regarding the probabilities of survivals etc so in this case what is happening is it's a specific link that is getting created between the age and the death so we are forcefully trying to put a link between the covariates which are the age and the death which is the response variable and this kind of relationships they are not identified by default they have to be explicitly specified by the analyst now this is what was one of the limitations of the typical hazard bay proportional hazard regression models which use a combination of parametric as well as the semi parametric approaches to uh, do the modeling of a survival variable but when we are getting into a survival decision tree so here we understand survival model is a simpler one but if i have to partition this survival model let's say age based gender based and uh, income based etc i one thing is i can use a cox proportional hazard model which tries to fit in some kind of relationship between the hazard which is the survival or uh, the death element versus <coughs> these various covariates we are trying to force relationship between them and we are trying to create different equations in case of a proportional hazard model but in the place of proportional hazard model i can very well think of using a survival decision tree right the the splitting the partitioning of the survival models across the different groups of data that is what is happening in a cox proportional hazard model we are trying to look at the survival part the time to event part not for the data as a whole but for groups of data separately so the cox proportional hazard model is one such kind of a helpful thing where a parametric and semi parametric combination can be used there whereas in a survival decision tree which is an alternative to cox proportional hazard regression model it is allowing the data scientists without putting any kind of a link right even if i don't know how age is related to the death of the person or even if i don't know how gender is related to the death of the person i don't need to forcibly fit any kind of a link between the response variable and the covariates right i i really don't need to know what is the kind of interaction that is existing between these two variables so which means there is a much much greater flexibility that is there for me and even the detection of the relationships is done automatically i don't need to specify the relationships in advance based on the data that i have so even if i assume that there might be a relationship uh, uh, based on uh, let's say in our case the number of wall space right that is what we are calling as a time to event let's say that might be differing based on a uh, home versus away or i may be saying no that might be a uh, very much uh, uh, differing based on whether he is playing in the first innings or in the second innings now i really don't need to give all these relationships explicitly if i give a list it can identify the scenarios where the influence is existing and where the differentiation does not exist 
So prognostic grouping is something that is coming out as a natural output from the survival trees. So that's one reason compared to Cox proportional hazard models, we can very well think of relying on the survival decision trees. Now, to execute the survival decision tree, there are a couple of algorithms. So in R, we will try to use this exponential algorithm. So here the assumption is the time values. In our case, the ball spaced. Right? Because we have taken the ball space for this example. Uh, uh, ball space is the time related uh, part here. Time to out. Ball space to out. So the time values are assumed to fit an exponential model here. So I am assuming that they are fitting an exponential model. For that, we will install the package R part and I will use the R part function again here. Okay, so let me get started with my analysis out here. I am installing the package R part. I think we have installed it earlier. So let me directly load it. That's much better. But if you have not installed it, you installed it. Because we have used it for uh, other uh, topics earlier, I have already installed it. So the R part is directly loaded out here. And just for uh, information, we'll look at the R part function to see what it typically offers for us. If you see, it is fitting an R part model. Now, one, I have to give formula as an input. The formula is the dependent variable versus the explanatory variables. So I can very well uh, give that, right? Right now, first let me set the data right and then I'll give it. So the formula is something that I have to give with a response but no interaction terms. So no stars and no colons, only the pluses are used as separators. Right? Then the data is something that I have to give with to interpret the variable names in the formula. So I have to give the name of the data, the weights, if at all there is a weight that are assigned. Right. If I am taking only a subset of the data, then I have to give that. All right. The method. In method, I can have any of these four methods. ANOVA, uh, Poison, Class or EXP. So here we would be using EXP. But one of these four methods I can use. So four different kinds of models are getting picked. First of all, let's understand this is recursive partitioning and regression trees, R part. <coughs> so if the method is missing, then the routine tries to make an intelligent guess if I don't give a method. If Y is a survival object, then it's better that I use EXP. If Y is a survival object, that's the reason I am giving EXP. If Y has two columns, then the method Poison is assumed. If there are two columns per Y, then it assumes the Poisson data. If Y is a factor, then class is assumed. This is where we have used it uh, for uh, classification algorithms. Otherwise, method equal to ANOVA is assumed. So you could see here, this is for continuous variables. This is if the response variable is a categorical variable. If the response variable is a time to survival kind of a variable, then it will use EXP and uh, if it is having two columns, then it is using Poison. So here we will uh, specify the method as EXP directly. That's it. So based on this, I will get, uh, uh, I will get an exponential algorithm for the time to survival kind of a data, right? All right, so let me go back. So that is what it is. So here the few things that I have to mention. One, Z is a survival response variable. So it should be a survival related stuff. 
but in our data we directly don't have a survival variable we have two columns one is the ball spaced and two is the status so basically one we have time to event data to the status of the event so these two put together will actually create a survival object so you see here by taking these two from the data time to event in this case the ball spaced status whether the event has occurred or the data is censored based on these two so in this case i have to always specify whenever the event has occurred i want to set it as 1 and whenever the event did not occur and the data is censored i will take it as 0 so i will create z is survival time and status survival object is constructed using the survival package so i have to load the survival package as well because i will construct the survival object now from this data so we have loaded the survival package as well the data is the data set containing the explanatory variables and the method i have to set it explicitly as exp which will indicate a survival decision tree when i'm setting the method as exp that itself indicates that it is a survival decision tree so in this case i have to first load the packages which i have already done r part and survival both the packages are being done then i have to get the data we have already loaded the data virat let me perform some basic uh, summary on that virat to see if there are any or some such kind of stuff i don't think there are any right the strike rate is actually looking like is actually looking like uh, a string variable i don't know why we need to really see that factor the strike rate is looking like a factor whereas it has to be a number all right then the ball space okay it's a number from 0 to 148 Position, yes, 1 to 7 positions he has played. Innings, first or second. Oppositions, we have different set of oppositions out here. Home or away, 103 away and 65 home. Statuses, there are uh, so many zeros, uh, ones. But yeah, more number of ones because the out as an event has occurred. <coughs> right? Okay. So, only the strike rate is having a problem. Either one, we can ignore that strike rate as a part of the model for understanding purpose. Or again, we have to go back uh, to the spreadsheet and see why it is showing me uh, 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 as a string. Right? So, probably let's do one thing for quick for quick observations, let me uh, quickly look at uh, how this data is. So let me take Virat Dollar SR. Oh, there is one place I think the hyphen is there in the data, right? So that is what could be the reason. Let's do one thing. Then I'll take Virat as again Virat. I'll take a subset of Virat where I'll consider all the columns, but the rows wise, where I will consider Virat dollar SR, Virat dollar SR not equal to the hyphen. Right, I'll set it as Virat dollar SR not equal to hyphen this is what i will set that would be the rows that i want to consider and i'll consider all the columns let's see what is happening <coughs> now now what is uh, happening with the dim of where how many rows how many columns there are 167 rows and seven column earlier what was the situation we don't know so let's see first of all whether that 
whether that uh, strike rate has typically gone off yeah looks like in the data that strike rate is not existing so what i can very well uh, do is virat dollar sr i'll consider it as as dot numeric as dot character first because it's a factor i'll convert that factor into uh, uh, first into a character and after that i'll convert it into numeric first the factors are getting converted into characters and those characters are getting converted into numbers now let me just check the summary of virat okay now it's looking much better the minimum is 0 the maximum is 209 right the first quarter third quarter I'll, so it's looking like uh, it's a numeric data so let's use this data rather than the one where uh, it has taken uh, a hyphen in the data so let's ignore that record all the other things let's go ahead okay so we got the data we did a preliminary inspection of the data using the summary no na values no uh, weird values like we had in case of strike rate we have removed that weird value from the data as well if required i can very well perform i can very well perform the transformations of the response variable or the explanatory variables if at all in some cases i want to play around using the logarithm of the type instead of directly taking the type so i can very well uh, do all those kinds of uh, activities but yes now the major part comes in wherein i have to create a survival object based on the time and the status so let me create one survival object i'll take a survival object called z right wherein i am creating the survival object with two variables one is the time variable and the second one is the status so let me uh, take the time as virat dollar bf the ball space that's the time variable and virat dollar status is the status variable out here based on this a survival object is created if i look at the survival object there is nothing specific right the only thing it 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 creates in a kind of a way <coughs> that the survival models understand 70 plus 2 plus 104 plus so it's basically nothing but the ones are uh, uh, the where the event has occurred the number would be taken as it is where the event did not occur it would be appended with a plus that's the major thing that happened and much more than that when i look at the class of z right if you just supply the data like this it doesn't work because if you look at the class of z it's a serve class so i have to really uh, convert even if i provide the data in this format the class of it needs to be a survival class that's the step then now we are ready to fit the decision tree because as a part of the decision tree the inputs that i require are z should be a survival variable now i got my survival variable now because of this i am ready to fit my data and now i can very well talk about the different variables which can influence it where i want to do the bifurcation as well so let me call it as fit survival that's the name of the variable that i'm using i'll use the r part function for this z is my response variable so as a part of my input variables i don't know so first let me take the position or let me take innings first versus second or even i would like to take the opposition i can go one by one actually opposition is too big so probably uh, let me take it separately home away so some set of variables 
and the data in this case for me is Virat. As I said, we need to use the method as exp. That's it. This one single line is going to fit your model. That's the simplicity. The entire survival analysis is fitted through this one single line. If you really see what it has done, fit serve. So it has done a splitting only based on the innings. Though you have given position, innings, home away, so many inputs that you have given, the tree found that the difference is very significant only with respect to innings. Nothing to do with home or away. Nothing to do with the position. Only with respect to innings, it has considered. So the tree has built separately innings greater than or equal to 1.5, which means the second innings versus the first innings. So when he has batted second, his time to event was slightly different from when he has batted first. That's the major thing that has come out through this survival analysis. And I can very well get a plot of this uh, fitment altogether. So I'll do the plot of the fit survival model, which clearly brings out, uh, I have to put the text in it as well. So it says, innings greater than or equal to 1.5. So we have to, uh, uh, we have to uh, really uh, uh, make some small modifications uh, to this uh, tree wherein uh, we will get the n values as well. So let me do one more thing. Let me do the plot again. Now the text wise along with this model I would also say use dot n equal to true. So that I will get the n values. How many of them are falling in this group? How many of them are falling in that group? Then I would also, uh, because the size of the text is too big, I will actually make it uh, some 75% of the original by setting it uh, as 0.75. And I will display all the values. So this is where I am getting all equal to true. So now you could understand slightly a better uh, representation out here. Innings greater than or equal to 1.5. There are 142 uh, out of 167 altogether. And what we could uh, see is the difference is quite clear. Here it is 0.85 versus 1.215. Now we'll understand what these two differentiations are more like. You could see here in this uh, output that it has given, the split, split is innings greater than or equal to 1.5. There are 95 such innings, innings less than 1.5, which is the first innings. There are 72 such kind of uh, occurrences. The deviance is 130 here. The deviance is 70 here. The Y value, Right, the Y value, we are talking about a survival uh, object. So here it's coming out to be 0.85 and here it is coming out to be 1.21 and it's a survival, it's a, uh, a, a terminal variable because it is denoted by a star. Now we have plotted terminal nodes report the estimated rate. So we have got the estimated rate as 0.85 in case of the second. So in uh, so estimated rate in terms of uh, out happening is lesser. The estimated rate of out happening in the second innings is much lesser, which means uh, the survival is much higher in the second innings compared to the first inning. Right? So the estimated rate of the event, occurrence of the event, rate of uh, occurrence of out is only 0.85. So the chances of getting out in the second innings are much, much lesser compared to the chances of getting out in the first innings. That is what we could see out here. And it's also giving me the number of events and the observations that are available. Now, for each, let's say I want to know at the node 2, <coughs> I want to get the complete details. 
I can very well use the path dot r path. Here, of course, we don't have any complex path, so I really don't need to bother too much about it. But if I really want the path dot r path, and I say node number two, what is the scenario? It says node number two. It is coming from the root node, and the uh, logic for the split is innings greater than or equal to. 1.5. Like that, I can very well see if the tree is a very complex tree. I can very well use the path that our path to get how it has reached that particular path of the tree. So you can see the rules that lead to the set of rules which are leading to that specific node here because it's only a one-layered node. Well, I really don't need to uh, bother about uh, what is the path that it has taken. But if the tree is a multi-layered kind of a tree, the path plays a very important role. Then we could also use uh, the plot CP. Let's understand what this plot CP function is. It gives a visual representation of the cross-validation result. So, uh, if at all uh, uh, we are we are talking about uh, different uh, cross validations, we can look at uh, the relative error in the process. So, I have to give an R part object as the input, right? But it will give me the complexity parameter, especially talking about whether the differences are significant one across. Uh, uh, across uh, the first innings versus the second innings. So I can very well do a plot CP of the fit survival data model. I can do a plot CP of this, which is telling me that this is what is the complexity parameter. The relative error is not, uh, if, you, if you look at the relative error, it is somewhere around 1, but with uh, a kind of, uh, uh, if, if we are uh, changing the size of the tree, the relative error is going in this typical manner. Right? So, the one, one thing we can very well uh, look at it is, if there is a big change, if there is a, a big change, we could see that uh, the relative error is going to be drastically different. So, in that case, there is a big need to really prune the tree quite heavily. Whereas, in this case, if the difference is not that drastically changing, then there is no need to prune the tree. Because you could see here, one is without doing the branching and this is after the next branching. So, there is a slight difference, but uh, beyond the, and, and uh, you are getting the minimum most error after doing the first branching. And uh, because of that, there is no reason to really prune the tree. The tree itself is a, a one layer tree. So, if the tree is a, a much, much deeper kind of a tree, then looking at the size of the relative error, Wherever the error is the minimum most possible, it is where we will take a call in terms of that should be the better tree. So, here the size of the tree is 1. This is the relative error. Size of the tree is 2. This is the relative error. So, the relative error is the lowest in this case itself. So, I can very well uh, go ahead by keeping the same tree. I don't need to really prune the tree to any kind of an extent. This is applicable only if my tree size is uh, exceptionally uh, long. Then I would see wherever the uh, relative error is much, much lower. That is where I can think of uh, uh, taking a, uh, a pruning on the tree. Survival times can vary differently between the subjects. But now, once this uh, survival is there, I can very well think of plotting this uh, survival object, one for the first innings and for the second innings as well. 
right? Because they normally decision tree analysis is useful to homogenize the data. So we have homogenized the data into first innings separately and second innings separately. So we have differentiated between the two subgroups. So here, uh, based on the treatment, we will differentiate the subjects. Based on the innings, we have differentiated the subject. So I could have differentiated it between home and away, various other things. Whereas if there is a single tree, then it is grouping all these things and overall survival is what is being talked of. But when we are going with the survival tree, then there is a kind of a splitting <coughs> that is happening based on the various grouping criteria, which could help us in understanding uh, the survival models in a much more appropriate manner. Now I can go ahead in terms of doing the plotting of the survival based on the final notes, right? So I can very well do the plotting of that uh, survival. So for that, I can uh, very well uh, consider, let's say I want to uh, look at uh, the survival uh, model. So first let's do a survival fitment. Let me uh, use uh, some variable, km, we will use as survival fit as a function. Let's use what this survival fit function is going to do for us. This function creates survival curves from either a formula, either I can give a formula. So this is where I will uh, take uh, the formula that we have uh, used earlier. A previously fitted Cox model or a previously fitted accelerated failure time model. Any of those things I can give as in, uh, input to it. So I am giving the formula from uh, from our the same uh, <coughs> from our same data frame. So I'll use a variable called KM where I am using surfit. The dependent variable is Z, which is a survival variable. And I would also consider, so if you look at this uh, model, fit serve, right? Let's see this model fit serve again. It is giving me these are the things, right? So if I type fit serve dollar where, so it is giving me individually right, fit serve dollar where if I am typing, I will get individually all those records which particular node they are falling into. Are they falling into node 2, node 3, which particular leaf node they are falling. So that is the reason I want to fit uh, the, this model when I am trying to fit a graph for this, I will use this serve fit function wherein I will take the dependent variable as my survival variable z and independent variable as fit serve dollar where which will tell me individually for each. So z is also individually for each. So it will uh, tell me this kind of information. So the dependent variable versus the independent variables and the data that I am taking is without. Now I will get my KM. So the KM now is nothing but it is doing a fitment. There are 95 N where equal to 2, where equal to 3. So there are 74 such kind of uh, events where the out has occurred. The median is 50. The lower, so 50 balls uh, is the median for uh, the out to happen. 35 is the lower control limit and 73. So typically uh, the approximate number of balls, uh, the median, right? Uh, the median number of, on an average, 35 to 73 balls before getting out in the second innings. Whereas on an average, it is 22 to 63 balls with a median of 35 when he is batting in the first inning. So that is what is the typical 
serve fit function typically giving me as an output. Whereas I can very well do the plotting of that serve fit as well. So I'll do the plot of KM. Right, I can uh, differentiate it. Uh, probably let me put two different colors. Let me first see what this uh, KM is directly coming up. So wherein on the x-axis we are having the time and y-axis we are talking about the status. So because both of them are showing the same way, I would like a slightly improvised version in this KM. So first we will set two different colors. green comma red so one of them would be green the other one would be red if you want i can very well go ahead in terms of even setting the legend and all that stuff as well so it looks like this this is the survival model you could see that uh, the green is associated with two which is uh, uh, which is uh, uh, the second innings and uh, the red is associated with the first innings and uh, we could also see that uh, there is uh, a slightly a higher level of survival before getting out in case of the second innings when compared to the first innings right and uh, probably I can very well uh, plot the legend to this I can very well uh, plot the legend to this wherein I am uh, bringing out at some location. So let me bring it at uh, the location 20, comma 0.2. Let me bring the legend at this x value 20, y value 0.2. Then uh, the legend values per se. I have to give as two important things out here. The first one is the first in is second innings. And the other one is the first innings. So this is what is the legend text. And I am also giving uh, the line. Uh, colors I have to give the color is coming out to be green and red and I have to say the line type equal to 1 so these are the things I am giving as a part of the legend what has happened Oh, color equal to, I have to give C off. Okay. So now let me see what has happened to the legend. Yes. So we are getting the second innings is indicated with a green and the first innings is indicated with a red. Now, how do we really interpret it? Right? Okay. If I really want to say, what is the chance that he will survive for a 20 balls? What is the chance that Virat Kohli will survive for 20 balls? Now, if I go ahead and do the, uh, go ahead and interpret from the graph, if he is playing in the first innings, the chances are 60% that he will survive for at least 20 balls. Whereas if he is playing in the second innings, it's close to 75% that he will survive 20 balls. 
right what is the probability that he will uh, survive for at least uh, 100 balls if he is playing in the first innings it's around 15% or so but if he is playing in the second innings it would be more than 25% so you could very well say that his survival rates are much higher in the second innings compared to that of first inning which is a but it has nothing to do with home away no other features are really influencing uh, his play it's only the first innings versus second innings where you could see a clear cut differentiation in the way he plays so finally we could clearly conclude that across the park there is no overlap anywhere in the tree so it's a very clear indication that his chances of survival are much much better when he is playing in the second innings chances of not getting out are much much better in when he is playing in the second innings compared to that of the first innings that's one important conclusion that we can bring out by using the survival decision tree models here uh, as a part uh, as a part of our understanding uh, of the decision trees right so that's how we want to uh, look at the survival uh, decision trees using the exponential algorithm then we will move on to the another important algorithm in this uh, context which will do the similar kind of a process which is the conditional inference survival tree it's also a non parametric regression tree but it is embedding the tree structure regression models in it so this can be executed through the party function uh, party package with the c tree function again right we have used c tree for various uh, uh, activities till now so let's load the party function as well again okay the party function is loaded now we'll use uh, the c tree again so but here also it requires the same survival response variable so i'll not create it again because we have already created z which is uh, based on the status as well as the time time taken for a particular event so z is a survival object which we have already created using the survival package and data is a sample of explanatory variables so we'll directly uh, go ahead in terms of the execution out here right uh, because uh, the only difference uh, here is the model is different all the initial steps are similar so we will uh, i think we have already taken care of all these activities this is done this is done this is done this is done perform transformation now we we have already created a survival object based on time and status now let's plot the decision tree right fit and plot so i'll call it as fit conditional so let me call it as c tree conditional inference survival tree so conditional survival tree let me call it as cs tree conditional survival tree where the function that i am using is the c tree that we have used earlier but here the uh, response variable needs to be a survival variable z till day i have to give uh, some of the variables so let's say i am still giving position plus innings plus home away i am giving again all these three as the input parameters wherein i am giving the data is coming from virat that's it i have to give as an input here i don't need to specify the method or something the moment my z itself is a survival variable that itself is sufficient for understanding the process so let's see what has really come out of this model oh there is no tree structure at all all 167 are treated in a similar way then better let me remove some things out here let me try removing the position from the model to see whether there is any kind of an improvement no even in this case it looks the same so better let me uh, remove 
even the home and away from the model so at least definitely it will give it uh, separately for uh, innings 1 versus innings 2 but we will get the same data which we have got even with uh, the exp algorithm right because you could see out here 72 versus 95 so it has really given a small split right there but, but when we are uh, going with a combination of variables it did not even do a split the conditional inference tree did not do even any kind of a split out there. So let me see if uh, I have gone with a plot for this where I had uh, two trees, two nodes. So this is how the plot directly comes out. That's the advantage, right? Obviously, uh, there uh, to some extent we can compare, but uh, the comparison is slightly difficult when we are having it them in two different. Uh, uh, graphs all together but yes to some extent you can make out right if you are talking about the 50 percent here it is coming out uh, so you have to draw the graph on either sides to really uh, make out uh, some significant differences between the two but uh, at least it will show a higher level uh, understanding if you see here here it is left out uh, at this stage whereas here we are seeing it uh, going much much down so there is some level of uh, improvement in case uh, uh, of uh, uh, survival. There is an increase in the probability of survival in case of uh, the node 3, which is talking about the second innings, whereas uh, uh, much lesser in case of the first innings. So let's see what internal loads they are reporting the p-value. So, if this p-value is lesser than 0 0.05, it's a clear indication that the split is a significant split. But if the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, I can very well ignore the splitting criteria. So, here the splitting based on the innings is a significant split. The leaf nodes are giving me the number of subjects. So, there is a 72 here, 95 here and a plot of the estimated survival curve. So, I am getting the survival curve in both the cases. So, what is the chance of survival, let us say, for 60 balls in the first innings versus 60 balls in the second innings? I can get it from the survival model. And I can also get the print function. Right, if I am doing the print, of course, again, it will give me the same as FITCS3, fit but I can get the same using the print function as well, the same thing. Right, 167 observations. So, that's also one more uh, important thing that I am getting. I can also get the wear of it to see how many of them are there in each of the leaf nodes as we have uh, already discussed earlier. Right, if I say if it's CS3 dollar wear, now here I have to give it as wear of fit CS3. So, you will see some of them into the node 2, some of them into the node 3 and so on. And I can very well create a table of this where function. <coughs> so, there are 72 people falling, uh, there are 72 instances which are falling into node 2, which is uh, typically, which is typically uh, uh, the first innings. And there are uh, uh, 95 instances that are falling into the node 3, which are into the first headings. Now, you can very well go ahead in terms of plotting the tree, just like the way we have uh, plotted uh, earlier. Right, uh, we can very well uh, get tree response. Just look at uh, one more function called tree response here. A class for representing the binary trees. So, if you simply take S tree as tree response of fit CS tree. So, S tree typically is giving you for each one for each out of the 167, it is typically giving you an object where you are going ahead with a, a separate 
fitment, the binary tree for each of the object, which is giving me a class of the survival fit object. So overall, you can very well uh, go ahead in terms of uh, doing the plotting for each of the nodes. Right, if you want to go with a node tree or whatever, for each of the nodes, you can very well go ahead in terms of uh, fitting an S3 object and we can very well get a 95% confidence intervals, etc. So, graphical displays uh, can very well be improvised in that process as well. But the major input out here is, you could clearly see that uh, based on the different uh, uh, covariates that you are providing based on the different factors that you are providing the survival uh, analysis is uh, being done separately for each of the groups and that is what is the benefit that we get out of the survival trees right so this is what i wanted to cover as a part of this uh, session if you have any further queries regarding the same you can very well get back to me by giving me a call on the number that i have given below or you can even send in an email at wamsidhar at pacegurus.com. Thanks a lot for listening to this uh, session. Thank you very much.